What's up guys, welcome back to another Genshin video. The third child ban has just been released by Genshin Impact, and it's kind of a big skip. And yes, I know, I know, I'm a little late to the content, but better late than never. But anyway, Charles V1 Bandit actually has Yanfei, Ningguang, and Chong Yun as the 5 stars featured on his banner. So for most people, this is going to be kind of a skip, but I'm going to do a quick overview of these 4 stars real quick, so that if you don't know what they are about, I'll tell you right now. For those who've already watched my channel, you already know I think Ning Guang's the best 4 star DPS in the game. She's my absolute favorite character, she's really fun to play. But if you do want to build her as a main DPS, I do recommend you get Constellation 2 and then build her up. Because she's really not that good at Constellation 0. At Constellation 1 she gets a pretty big buff, but mainly that Constellation 2 is when she gets crazy. And then she gets another extreme damage spike at Constellation 6 when she's able to contain 7 star jades. So yeah, Ningguang's a really good DPS character, but she does kind of rely on someone like Zhongli or her shoulder to pop her Geo Resonance to allow her to do more damage. And since she is also way squishy, a shoulder like Zhongli also complements her well. But once again, just try to get Constellation 2 before you build her. Yanfei is really similar to Ningguang, as her normal attacks give her one stack of solid seals that can stack up to a maximum of 3 and then increase her charge attack damage. I don't really know much about it since I don't build it and not have any constellations for it, but I know she can do pretty high damage at higher constellations and if you put in a vaporize comp. And for her constellations, it seems like her constellation 1 and constellation 6 are probably the best ones. The Constellation 6 allows you to have 4 Scarlet Seals, which is actually pretty good. And the Constellation 1 decreases the charge attack stamina cost. But once again, I don't know much about Yanfei since I haven't built her, so I can't really say much. But she is an overall pretty good main DPS character, but will probably take a lot of investment for it to be in the top damage area. Now the last 4 star is Chong Yun, and if you want my honest opinion, I do not like Chong Yun at all. I think Chong Yun is dog water. His talents are pretty nice to allow with melt and frozen comps, since it infuses your active care to sword, claymore, or pull on with cryo, but that means this can also reduce some damage in some team comps, so his team comps are kind of limited based on his abilities. And yeah, he's just like honestly not that used that much unless it's specific team comps, so he's kind of like a high C, low B tier character, so I don't really recommend burning him all that much unless you just really like him, but there's no really priority in building him. So in conclusion, for most people this banning is a huge skip, especially since Tartaglia is getting his third V1, especially since it's his child's third time being shown. Since he already appeared two times, there's just a lot less people going for him. And the 4 stars that you get on the banner aren't really synergistic with him either. There's no like support characters on the banner, so if you will on this, you get some supports to help him out as well. It's just main DPS's and then like, a trash support. But of course, if you do like Child and think he's cool and like his playstyle, you should definitely go for him. He's really good at doing a lot of Hydro damage at once and enabling other characters to do a lot more reactions. So if you do like him, I do recommend you go for him. Just if you do well on this banner and you don't want any of the 4 stars on this banner, then you might just want to skip. Now let's talk about the weapon banner next. The Polar Star and the Memory of Dust are the featured 5 star weapons on this banner. And there's a lot of 4 stars like the West is pretty good. Favonius Sword and Favonius Lance are both good energy recharge weapons, but they're not like top tier for anyone, just if you need some energy recharge, this is a good weapon to choose on someone. Eye Perceptions, meh, it's pretty alright. And then that new Claymore is actually pretty good if you have certain teams. The Memory Dust is actually pretty good for Ning Wong, which is conveniently on Child's banner. So if you do get Ning Wong and have the Memory of Dust, you should definitely pair her up with it. It's one of the best weapons for her. And also the West does get pretty good at higher constellations. Now let's talk about this 4 star Claymore real quick. This description reads, For every point of the entire party's combined maximum energy, the elemental burst damage of the character with this weapon is increased by 0.12%, which can have a maximum of 40% increased elemental burst damage. So if you have a whole entire team of like 80 energy cost characters, the person who is wielding this claymore will have their burst maximized by a crap ton. So it's really good for specific teams, but I don't know if it's like gonna be all that crazy and important for you to grab because we did just get the luxurious sea lord which can grab its elemental burst damage maximum percentage at any time without having to do a specific comp or anything so this claymore is pretty good but you don't have to have a rush to get it 
Now the Polar Star 5 star bow is probably going to be the best in slot for many characters. At level 90 it can get a crit rate of 33.1% which is extremely high so your ratios are going to go through the roof and be insane with this weapon. And its description reads, elemental skill and elemental burst damage is increased by 12%. And after any attack hits an opponent, one stack of Ashen Night Star will be gained for 12 seconds. When 1, 2, 3, and 4 stacks of it are gained, attack is increased by 10, 20, 30, and 48%. And the stacks will count independently from each other. So basically this bow is just going to be actually cracked, increases elemental skill and burst damage, and then you can get massive attack increases just by hitting opponents with anything. So this is going to be insanely good, and this is just with the refinement 1 stats. Imagine it at refinement 5, so if you're a whale and you want to get this weapon, this is probably going to be an amazing weapon for your Ganyu, your child, your Yoimiya, you know, basically every bow character. But of course, all in all, I do not recommend pointing on weapon banners, especially if you're budget or free to play. Weapon banners just aren't worth it most of the time. So I recommend that you don't try rolling on this banner, but if you do got some money to spend and you do really want the 4 star weapons and the 5 star weapons, make sure you want both of the 5 star weapons, so just in case you do lose the one you wanted, you at least got something else you like. But once again, I don't recommend voting on weapon banners, I think they're trash. <laughs> So that's basically all for today's video, I hope you guys enjoyed. In conclusion, the child banner is a pretty big skip for most players since he's coming around for the third time, and none of the 4 stars are really synergistic with him. But if you do get Ning Wong, I definitely recommend you build her. Yard face pretty good, but I don't know much about her to absolutely say that she is amazing. But there are some good clips out there of her doing massive damage. And Chong Yun is only good in a sl very slim amount of teams, so if you do get him, I don't know if you want to build him or not, but I don't really recommend him. And then the weapon banner is pretty good, but all in all, I do not recommend you roll on the weapon banner, because I just think weapon banners are scams, and I don't think it really is worth it 99% of the time. So yeah, that's basically all for today's video. Sorry I'm really on the news, I was sleeping. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. <sighs>